Hello, welcome back. I uh, had an idea for a quick video today. Um, I was doing some debugging earlier and I uh, ended up needing to use Valgrind to find the bug, actually two bugs. And I thought it would be kind of cool to uh, show that, that process, how I got there, um, how I figured out what the problem is, how I fixed it. And uh, it'd be kind of like a tutorial on how to use Valgrind, but um, really more specific to our use case with our programming language. And I'll just get started. So uh, the mystery was after, uh, let me switch the camera here. After I made a change, um, the change was, oh, I don't know how to get, so I'm running inside of Docker. Um, I'll just install Git real quick. So after I'd made a change, I noticed that the REPL was broken in a very weird way. Um, after this change, I added string new. It was causing the REPL to break, which didn't make any sense because you could do, um, this all day long just by passing what you want to execute right here but as soon as you did it in the REPL you'd get a stack uh, a seg fault from Ruby not cool um, so I narrowed it down with a bunch of uh, printf debugging <laughs> to um, anytime self is referenced in the REPL then we would get the stack trace. And um, through a whole bunch of printf debugging, uh, which is my go-to bad habit that I use a lot, um, I, I've, I narrowed it down to the environment was getting blown away. So um, I forget where, oh, let's see, where was that? I think it was in source natalie.c. Um, I was doing nat send, where is nat send? So somewhere here, so like I would do printf, um, env, and then there's the global env which hangs off of that. And I was just printing the pointer like this. And every time through, um, well the first time through the global env would be what I expect, it'd be a valid pointer. And then the second time through in the REPL only, then it would be an invalid value. I was like, what is happening? So I spent uh, an embarrassing amount of time trying to figure out, just by putting printf everywhere, trying to figure out what is happening. And then I remembered Valgrind, which I have not used in a long, long time, since probably college. Um, like I said before in other videos, I'm not a professional C programmer, so uh, these things are a little slow for me. Um, but I do want to share with you um, what I figured out was, let's see, let's, uh, that's fine. Don't, don't know why that's that way. That's fine. Um, if we did bin Natalie and we compile this to something, let's just call it foo and we print self. And so now we have a foo, right? We have a foo right here. If we do valgrind foo, uh, actually let's do it with some now I'll just do it. Yeah, I'll just do it normal. It's going to run the command, run the, the program, and then it's going to give us a report. And we don't care about leak summary um, because we don't have a garbage collector yet. So we're going to have tons and tons of leaks because the program is going to finish and it's going to have a whole bunch of memory allocated. That, but so we can actually just ignore that with leak uh, check equals no, I believe. And so this is the part that we that we care about. Um, conditional jump or move depends on uninitialized value. And so that's when I saw this, I knew this was related because this is essentially nat send was where I was seeing the weirdness and that calls nat call method on class. And so I knew there was something going on here. And uh, and then I, I added this flag track origins. Yes. And so what that will give us where the memory was initialized. So conditional jump depends on uninitialized values. The where it was created was by heap allocation by a malloc in define singleton method and Natalie C line 635. So let's pull it up. 
uh, Natalie C635. So here we are. Here's our malloc. Here's where our method is being initialized and um, where we're uh, you know, initializing the method. This, this is a nat method. It stores a function pointer. Um, let's just go look. Source h. What does nat method actually store? Um, it's just a function pointer and an, an optional, this is optional, optional environment. Um, but I noticed here, I have another method called nat define method. And what it does is it sets the environment, it initializes this outer thing to null, this pointer to null. We use that elsewhere to determine if the method has its own environment. Um, this is kind of a kind of a weird, wacky way of doing it. I probably should just have a, an integer uh, that says it has its own environment, yes or no, but this is how I did it. Um, and so what we were doing was on methods that were defined using that method, we were um, we were assuming that there was an environment here, even though this isn't a real pointer. This is an uninitialized uh, memory. This is just random randomness. And so, um, as soon as I found that, I just copy copy this line down to here and run make and uh, ran the, the check again. So let's just do that compile again. We'll compile a new foo binary. Or run leak check no, track origin yes on foo. And it fixed it. So yay for Valgrind. That was super easy. I don't know why I didn't pull this out. It would have saved me uh, uh, probably an hour or so. Um, so that was the first bug that was fixed. Now the second bug that I used Valgrind to find was um, well, let me see, source uh, natalie.c. Um, trying to remember var, oh, it was set var, I believe. Var set, yeah, there it is. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a minute to look at this code and see if you can find a bug. I'll explain what, what it's doing or what it's, what it's supposed to do, and then you see if you can uh, figure, out, figure out why it's not actually working. So I'll make this a little bit bigger. Because uh, it, it didn't jump out to me. Valgrind helped me find this. So navbar set, what this does is, uh, if this is the first variable, so we pass in an environment, uh, the variable name, this actually isn't even used, so uh, that was kind of a remnant of an old implementation. I've left it in for now. Uh, the index where we want to set the variable, so 0, 1, 2, or whatever. So the first variable would always be 0, and then the value of the variable. Um, and the variables are numbered because the compiler keeps track of the of converting a name into a number. So that, that's a, irrelevant. But basically set a variable on a, a number, on an index. And we set that on the emv vars array. Um, it's just a chunk of memory that we, that we malloc and uh, actually we calic so that it's zeroed out and um and then we we just put them in an index slot on on the memory um so if this is the first variable then we're going to do calic and we want to do one more than the index so if the index is zero that means we want one um slot of memory and if the index is one then that means we want two slots of, of memory because it's so it's off by one right so um, so we do index plus one, size of a pointer to nat object. And then we set the variable count, which is just a, an integer. If this is not the first variable, this is, um, we already have variables, and the index is greater than or equal to var count, then we need to reallocate the memory and make the, the chunk of memory bigger. So we do realloc uh, vars, and we do um, the size of the uh, the pointer uh, times index plus one. And we increment the var count and we set the actual value in that array at the index and we return the value. So um, I've talked over the what the code is supposed to do and uh, if you found if you found the bug then comment below say you found it. Uh, no, no cheating, no fast forwarding. 
Uh, comment below if you found the bug. I did not see this. I'd looked at this code many times and I did not notice it. And I wrote the code, obviously. So uh, let's just see. Um, let's just see if, if Valgrind can find this with, with a little bit more help. Um, so get diff. Let's just make sure that was okay. That was one fix that we made. Uh, let's see what's, what's a big chunk of code so we can compile a test. Um, all of <laughs> the most Natalie code ever written was, is in our tests so far. So we're just going to compile that. So we're going to say, say assign test, test, Natalie assign test. We're going to compile that to a binary and we're going to run it. It runs fine, all the tests pass, perfect. But let's run it through Valgrind. Uh, let's run it through this way, uh, assign test. Okay, lots of fun stuff. So um, we'll start at the top. Invalid write of size eight. Um, it's in NatVar set. Oh good, this is, this is where it is. This is our problem. <laughs> Um, address is eight bytes inside of a block of size nine alloc. What does that mean? What does that mean? It's it's saying something funky is happening. It's like you wrote eight bytes to a block that is nine bytes. Did you mean to do that? And then this is kind of it over and over again. Um, similar, similar. So this is 16 bytes inside of 17. And so I was like, it's off by one. Why is it off by one? Um, let's see, conditional jump remove depends on initialized value. This is the one that um, would cause a segfall, right? Uh, we're jumping based on bad bad memory. Um, heap allocation, this is a realloc in the same NatVar set. So this is all pointing to that same code. Um, so now that you know it's an off by one error, um, I think if I was better, I'd be able to, to know exactly what line. Let's see, realloc. I mean, this is basically saying what line it's on. It's on the realloc, so let's just edit that. Um, where's our realloc? Here it is. I wonder, I hope that was on the screen earlier. Okay, well, we'll see. Uh, so let me, let me make this back to normal size. Okay. So the, the realloc is here, and we know it's an off by one error, and that is what led me to this. This is the problem. This size of pointer times index plus one. As you guys know, because you're smarter than me, <laughs> you recognized it right away, probably. Uh, this is what's essentially happening. Everything in the parentheses happen, happens first, and then we add basically one byte onto the end of that, which is dumb. <laughs> what this was supposed to be was this. And I was probably in a hurry when I wrote it and didn't uh, didn't think it through, but let's just uh, do that and we'll, uh, we'll do a make and we'll compile this again and we'll run our uh, val grind on it again. Yes, there we go. And so now we don't have those errors, they went away. And that is how I found two um, pretty bad memory, uninitialized memory bugs in Natalie um, without a lot of work. Well, it was a lot of work first, but um, once I started using val grind, not a lot of work. Should have used it from the beginning. And as a result of that, um, let's check out master. Uh, I've actually added Valgrind to our tests. So um, when GitHub Actions runs, we now run uh, Valgrind. So I install it here, and then um, you can, uh, with Valgrind, you can say leak check no, error exit code one. So instead of returning the exit code of the binary, return um, zero for success or one for if there was a bad memory access or, or whatever, um, which uh, in our case there was. So um, if it returns a one, then then GitHub Actions will fail the build. If it returns a zero, then GitHub Actions will be, will be happy. So that's it, a uh, short video today. I just wanted to go over that because I was pretty excited that I got to use Valgrind in a way that um, uh, was very helpful and I hope that that helped you to see like some real world 
um, usage of it and in a way that um, can make you appear smarter than you really are. <laughs> so um, that's it. Thanks for watching. And uh, hopefully we'll in the next video, we'll get on to some more interesting stuff, not fixing bugs, hopefully. Um, but I want to keep working on regex stuff. Um, yeah, and I got lots, I got lots down the road, but regex stuff is definitely next. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.